A cell is the basic unit of all living things. An animal cell has a cell membrane, a nucleus, and cytoplasm. A plant cell has a cell membrane, a nucleus, and cytoplasm as well. It also has a cell wall, a vacuole, and chloroplast. Living things or organisms are built of cells. Some organisms are very tiny. We can only see them under a microscope. We call them microorganisms. Some microorganisms have just one cell. Imagine, just one cell and it is a living thing. An organism that is made up of only a single cell is called a unicellular organism. Uni means one. An organism that is built of more than a single cell is called a multicellular organism. There are a lot of multicellular organisms around us. Most of them are big enough to be seen. Now, let's take a look at some of the unicellular organisms around us. Do you know that bakers use microorganisms in baking bread? This is baker's yeast. When we add yeast into bread dough, the dough rises or expands. This is how yeast looks like under a microscope. Okay, can you tell which bread has yeast in its dough? Right, see what happens if you do not use yeast in the dough. we see here are thousands of unicellular microorganisms called pleurococcus. A pleurococcus is a plant. This is how one tiny cell of a pleurococcus looks like. It's round, brilliant green and has chloroplasts. Hey, did you know that chloroplasts have chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is needed in photosynthesis which is the process by which plants make food. Hmm, in this lake we can find many unicellular organisms. Come on, let's take a look at the organisms from the lake under a microscope. Oh, wow! I can see Paramecium, Euglena, Amoeba and Chlamydomonas too and aha! Uh -huh, I can see some multicellular organisms as well. Hmm, this slipper shaped unicellular organism is called a paramecium. Its body is covered with a lot of cilia which help it to move. Hey look! Paramecians move in a spiral manner. An amoeba is a colorless, jelly-like, unicellular animal. Hmm, it can change its body shape because its membrane is thin and flexible. It will form pseudopods. These are false feet. These false feet are used for movement and for capturing food. Hey, look at how the amoeba moves and captures food. Euglena 
is a unicellular plant because it has chlorophyll for photosynthesis. However, it also has an animal characteristic, a long flagellum used for movement. Whee! This green organism has a tiny red eye spot. It is sensitive to light. Ow! Besides photosynthesis, the euglena can also absorb food from water. Another unicellular organism, which is a type of plant and moves with the help of the flagellum, is called the Chlamydomonas. This plant moves towards moderate light but away from strong light. You have seen examples of unicellular microorganisms. Which of these microorganisms are plants? Which of these microorganisms are animals? Name the microorganisms that can move. So, you have seen some unicellular organisms. Now, let's take a look at some multicellular organisms. Organisms that are made up of more than one cell are called multicellular organisms. Eee! Fungus! This fungus is called mucor. Although it is very tiny, it is still a multicellular organism. Black bread mold is a type of mucor. It grows on stale bread. Ugh. The circular structure seen through a microscope is called sporangium. Sporangium contains spores. Ooh, they are white at first but become dark as their spores mature. When the sporangium bursts, the spores become bread mold. Can you see those green plants on the surface of this pond? <laughs> they are called spirogyra. Besides spirogyra, there's another multicellular organism that we can find here. <laughs> it's called the hydra. Let's find out about both of them. This green plant is called spirogyra. Spirogyra is a multicellular plant and this plant gets its name from the arrangement of its chlorophyll. The chlorophyll extends from one end of the cell to the other like a spirally twisted ribbon. Freshwater hydra is a small multicellular animal. Its body is built by two layers of cells. There are tentacles around its mouth. These tentacles are used to capture its prey. The tentacles draw the prey towards its wide open mouth. We have discussed these multicellular organisms. Can you name a few multicellular organisms that you can see around you? Do you think human beings are unicellular or multicellular organisms? Human beings, like other multicellular organisms, are made up of many different types of cells. There are more than 20 different types of cells. Each has a different shape and carries out a different function.
Let's take a closer look at some of these human cells. Aha! This is the cell of a muscle. Muscle cells contract and cause body movements. These epithelial cells protect the cells beneath them. The red blood cells inside the veins carry oxygen around our body. These cells also help remove carbon dioxide from the body. White blood cells kill bacteria and viruses that enter our body. And these fat cells store fat. Connective cells join other types of cell together. Nerve cells carry messages around our body. Can you name any other types of cell found in the human body? Do you know what these cells do? Cell organization A group of similar cells that carry out the same function will form what is called a tissue. For example, every muscle cell in a muscle tissue contracts to cause body movements. Two or more types of tissue working together will form an organ. For example, the brain, the heart, and the lungs are examples of organs. Hmm. When several types of organ carry out a specific function in the body, they form what we call a system. Different organs form a system to coordinate specific functions in the body. There are different systems in the body performing different functions. The circulatory system consists of the heart and blood vessels. The heart pumps blood through the body via the blood vessels. The mouth, salivary gland, esophagus, pancreas, stomach, intestines, and rectum form the digestive system. This system changes food that you have eaten into substances that your body can use. The kidney, liver, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra and the skin form the excretory system. The excretory system removes waste from the body. It's my turn, isn't it? skeletal system. It consists of the ribs, the vertebral column, the femur, the skull, and other bones. The skeletal system gives us shape, protects our internal organs, and enables our body to move. And here's something that you must never forget. The most important system in the body is the nervous system. It consists of the brain and the spinal cord.
So, organs form systems to coordinate special functions in the body. These systems help us carry out the daily processes of life normally and efficiently. All the functions of these systems are controlled by the brain. Wow! Do you know what this means? It means we are very complex organisms. Well, it starts with the muscle cells. Not just one muscle cell, but many of them together. When cells work together like this, we call it a tissue. Muscle tissue. These muscle tissues get help from my bones and nerve tissue to make my arm move. That's right! Complex organisms have systems that carry out processes that are important to daily living. By now, I'm sure you know two things. Number one, that your body is made up of millions of cells and two, that these cells are the basic units of bigger groups called systems. Let me make that clear. See, I'm bending my arm and just what helps me to do this? Right, so the muscle cell group forms the muscle tissue and the nerve cell group form the nerve tissue and the bone cell group form the bone tissue. All these tissues work together to form the organ, my arm. My arm and several other organs work together to form a system. So, that means when I bend my arm, I am using the musculoskeletal system that is the muscle system and the skeletal system. a microorganism. Do you think all unicellular organisms are microorganisms? Why? What is a multicellular organism? Whoa, 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 whoa. 